met up with our good friends at Optalong uh, at Neath 2024, and they provided us uh, two filters for review, the uh, L Enhance and the L Extreme F2 version. Now this F2 version is specifically designed for the FAST systems, uh, which what we use here on our channel, the RASA, uh, 11 inch Celestron RASA. But um, they said that, uh, that the L Enhance would work on the RASA. Now I've heard otherwise, but uh, so we decided we're gonna give this a shot and we did and um, pretty surprised at the results. So let's um, jump right into that. Um, we're gonna look at Pixin's site here. Bear with me just for a second while I get this pulled up. All right, so the first filter we're gonna look at is the L Enhance. And um, it's, let's see here, let's give you some, let's give you some specs on this one here. There's the actual data um, right off of the uh, Optalong website. And this L Enhance filter has uh, HA, H beta, and oxygen three. Um, and so far from what we've tested uh, here, um, and we only had a few, we had a very small window. We had some high thin clouds and we've had some storms and rain, um, but we were able to squeak in um, at least 30 minutes of a window that we had to test both these filters in. And luckily we only had like 32, 33% illumination from the moon. Uh, it wasn't an issue because it wasn't up yet. So uh, it worked out pretty well, but um, that's the actual data from the website. Um, and here is a um, three second um, test. This is just raw fits file. There's no stretching, there's no, Nothing to this. This is just the raw file right off the camera. And this is a three second um, shot here. And we're looking at the star um, alcade. And I believe it's like a 1.9 or 1 1.2 uh, magnitude. It's very, very bright. And uh, this, is the only, this is the only star that we were able to look at um, in our section of the sky because everything was clouded out. Uh, so this was a very small window that we had. But it was it was a good uh, good test because normally we wouldn't just uh, sit here and look at this one star. So it's a good test. It's a very bright star, um, but for three seconds it's not too too terribly bad. Um, here's a thirty second thirty second uh, image, and there's no calibration frames here, none so ever. That's uh, thirty seconds, and at sixty seconds. At 60 seconds, you can just start to see a little bit of a halo going around here. Uh, still not too bad. And 120 seconds. And it's about the same. You can kind of see a, a halo starting to form around it. It's not, it's not terrible, but it's there. And again, this wasn't designed to use on the RASA, so on a fast system. But it uh, so far is working, and and um, here is a um, here is a uh, three hundred second image of M eighty one, I believe M eighty two, Bode's Nebula and the Cigar Galaxy. It's um it turned out pretty good um for for working on a on a fast system when it's not designed to. I think it turned out pretty good. You can, um, you don't really see any, um, well, it's not going to be color, but you don't really see any any different variations in the stars as far as bloating of the stars or any um, uh, any halos around the lower magnitude stars, which you wouldn't want to see and didn't expect to see any of those uh, um, around these smaller stars. But this is one five minute image of that. And here is, this is what it looks like. Uh, we switched um, after we took the three second, the 30 second, the one minute and the two minute, and of course a five minute um, image. We switched filters and we moved over to the F2, um, the, um, the F2 L Extreme. F2 filter. Um, this one is designed to use on a fast system. Um, and I was 
quite surprised at the results um, around the star uh, Alcade. So this is the F2 um, 30 second uh, image. Uh, it's not bad. It's pretty good. There's no indication. It's real noisy, but again, there's no calibration frames here. Uh, this is just straight off the camera. Um, stars are nice and tight. Um, the background stars, and it's uh, there's no there's no halo there. But when we move into the 30 second image, you can start to make out a halo here and. This particular filter is, is supposed to be designed, this is the second version of this, this was designed to do away with those halos or minimize, minimize those. Um, but you don't see those in any of the background stars, the much dimmer stars. And again, this is an extreme test on this one filter. This is a very, very bright star, but you can really see the halo that's really starting to come around on this 30 second image. And I was, I was surprised to see this halo here with this F2. And you go to the L Enhance 30 second. And it's just barely visible here. A lot less noisier. And, and this one is a lot noisier, but the halo is more pronounced. And it gets worse when you go in to a longer... A longer image so there it is at one minute it's very pronounced at one minute and here it is again at two minutes again you can clearly see now you can clearly see and this is where i usually shoot my images is at two minutes uh that's kind of my sweet spot i like that it works well with the rasa i may experiment in moving those uh to like a five minute image, but we'll see. But with this two minute image right here with the F2 filter, it's got a very pronounced halo. And if we go back to the L enhance, you can you can see that there's just a it's it's almost not there, but it's definitely here and you can see it within the two minutes on the F2. So that was quite surprising. But again, it's it's an extreme, they said extreme star is very bright. Uh, the magnitude is very high and you would never normally sit there and image something like that. Now this is uh, the M81 and M82 um, five minute image with the F2. And I'm very pleased with this. The stars look really good. They're real nice and tight. Um, there's no haloing whatsoever on any of these stars. And the quality is pretty nice when you're zooming in you can tell now this has a a narrower band pass than the uh than the l enhance so let's pull that up and zoom in you can tell especially with the the cigar galaxy that with the three well with the f2 um there is data there, but it doesn't seem like it's a lot. It you can definitely tell that it it, it doesn't have uh, when it's when it's in black and white here. It looks like it doesn't have the data that the L Enhance has. Um, but when we when we take these away and put this in the color color version, here is. Um, Here's the color version. All I did to this was uh, basically crop the image, do a version, uh, just a, a regular version, one pass of noise exterminator, and then um, uh, dynamic background extraction. So all I did with this didn't change the, you know, no color, did nothing. That's it. Um, and it turned out pretty well. There's lots of data here for five minutes with this L Enhance um, filter. This filter, again, was not designed to work on a high-speed system, but it is. You can tell that there's plenty of data there, and I can't wait to go back and actually have a clear night and and try to get this, uh, you know, an hour, two hours on this, on this filter with the RASA and see how it works. And I'm not sure what this 
what this is here on this picture. It's just uh, this big blob of noise here. I'm not sure what that was refracting off of, if that's a um, an, an artifact. There's really no stacking going on. Um, there was nothing to stack. There's no calibration frames. Um, it, not really sure what that is, if it's messing with the light pollution versus uh, this filter wasn't designed for this system. I don't know what that is, but it, that particular artifact is not present in the in the F2 version. Here is the F2. This is the L Extreme F2 version. Uh, this one is the one that is designed for the high speed systems, and you can see it's dramatically different. It has a lot more data to it, way more color. Um, it just looks sharper. Um, it's, to me, it's just an overall better quality image. And again, there was nothing done to this other than uh, dynamic background extraction. It was cropped and one pass of noise exterminator. And it was done both on both these images were processed the same. There's there's no calibration frames. This is just the the basic one one five minute image. Um, but when we pull up the L enhance version of this, and we look at the galaxies, the galaxy portions. Excuse me. The L Enhance has looks like it has a lot more. Um, well, of course, it's going to have a lot more um, data in as far as like the the lightness. You know, it didn't cut down on the dust lanes, and it just has a lot more. It lets in a lot more light because it's not as narrow as a bandpass as the uh, L Extreme F2 version, and you can see the L Enhance version has a it's brighter. It gives more, I think, more contrast, more definition so to speak in these uh the in the nebulas here um as far as for five minutes uh but if we switch over to the f2 version and we zoom in on just the galaxy it really highlights of course it's going to the ha h alpha and the o3 um it's just going to isolate those individual areas and and it does it very well it it really highlights this area. Now, a lot of people say you don't use these dual narrowband filters on on galaxies. I I I, I do that. Um, I shoot everything with dual narrowband, and then I'll go back and I'll capture it without a filter or just the um, just an um, IR UV cut filter, um, and then I combine those two because I like the idea of having um of all that light coming through and getting that natural light from the galaxy like the L enhance is allowing to come through i really love that but i also want to have i also want to have the um the color and the contrast with the ha and the um the nebulas that come out inside those galaxies um kind of like what you see in this picture over here of m33 this was a combination of a couple filters and and it shot uh, four hours, I believe it was four hours, in, in just the dual narrowband HA and O3 filter to get the uh, the nebulas to pop out really big. And then I went back and, and shot it with, um, um, I think it was uh, two narrowband filters and one, um, well, actually with no filter, just an IR UV cut filter to really get that luminance built in there. Um, and it worked out very well. That's the way I do it. Um, I like combining those filters and trying them out. I just don't like to just shoot without a filter um, because, well, for here, we're in Bortle 4, but um, using the RASA so far, it it works well. I don't know about a slower system. I've never tried that with the Red Cat. Um, and I just got, um, just in the other day, we got the, uh, the um, ZWO-130. APO and um, can't wait till we have a clear sky to check that out. But um, as far as the filters go, um, the the L Extreme F2 filter, we're gonna have to do some more testing on this one um, to double check to make sure that those halos aren't present on um, on another star. Um, let's try like Alan Attack or um, Beetlejuice or another one of those stars other than Alcade. Um, 
and and see if it's um see if it's the halo is going to be there and, and it could be it could have been moisture or something on my lens but i highly doubt it um uh but anyway um we'll, we'll do some more testing on that and the um as far as the l enhance filter um it's pretty pretty pleased with this filter um Again, it wasn't designed for the, the use of uh, a fast system, but as you can see in this, um, as you can see right here, it does work. Um, it may not be optimal for a fast system, but it does work. And I can't wait to do some more testing um, when uh, in the wintertime when we can get some of these uh, really good nebulas to come up and we'll, and we'll test it out and we'll see uh, how well it performs um well, I, I like to do some shooting during full moon so we'll wait till uh, winter time comes rolls, rolls around and we'll test that uh, l enhance out during full moon and on a really good nebula like uh, ryan nebula or something that's really bright and we'll see how well it performs on a fast system but it's also we'll uh, we'll try it on the red cat to uh to see how well it works on a 4.9 speed or a uh, 7.7 .7 on the uh, ZW130. We'll try that. But um, pretty impressed with it so far. Um, thank you again to um, Optalong for uh, giving us those filters uh, for review. We, I really appreciate that. And um, I'm hoping we get a monochrome camera and um, get a set of filters for that to review. That would be awesome. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it for the uh, the two filters, again, it was the L Enhance, uh, Optilong L Enhance, and the Optilong L Extreme F2 version. Um, uh, great filters. Um, that'll add to our um, our stack of filters that we have. Oh, also, for those individuals, uh, for those individuals who, who never use the uh, filter, um, especially in the filter drawer, um, this is uh, ZWO camera. This is just for example here and a ZW, ZWO um, filter drawer and basically the filter drawer just comes out the filter goes in there this is the um, this is the Optilong L quad enhance which is another great filter um, I really like that filter but you just take the filter and it just screws right in now you can have uh, the two inch screw in filters, or you can have those other other filters that um, that don't screw in. This is a two inch mounted filter. So just carefully put it in there. And then it's only gonna go in one way. It, you can shove it in there, but it won't go all the way if it's the wrong way. But that uh, that's it. You just plop it in there and turn your camera on and away you go. All right, and last but not least, this came in the other day from High Point Scientific, and uh, can't wait to test this out. This is the Aptur All Night Imaging System uh, power power bank, and um, uh, well, hopefully it's going to power our big rig out there. But also, uh, hopefully it's going to take care of all of our imaging needs here in the future. And um, can't wait to test that out because that will definitely be tested on the very next uh, clear night. So again, thank you, uh, thank you for watching, and. Um, uh, clear skies everyone um, and if you are interested in any one of these filters from Optilong uh, please uh, look at the link down below and um, uh, it's, a, it's a link to High Point Scientific um, uh, click that link and it's, uh, it's free for you to use but it's on our affiliate link so it won't cost you any money and it uh, helps our channel out um, Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and um, again, clear skies.